Hey YouTube, welcome. And today we're going to do a vacuum bag video. And let's get right down to it. And the first thing that we have to tackle is preparing these mylars with some mold release wax. And in this case, I'm using a honey wax. It's an excellent product. And basically it's like uh, any other wax. You put it on, let it haze. Um, then you buff it off with a uh, paper towel now and then you let it sit and you have to let it sit for 10 15 or 30 minutes uh, that creates a hard shell on the mylar that you want now you can you can coat this like three four five times it's just gonna make that shell even thicker and better for you in the long run and even though this is polypropylene and nothing sticks to it I still think it's a good idea to use the uh, release wax Next, we're going to mix up our epoxy. Hello. What I'm using here is the West system of epoxy for laminating. Uh, you don't want to use the epoxy that's meant for tabletops and such. I don't think it has the same properties. Uh, I know it doesn't for uh, thin skin laminating, so try not to use it. And now we're just measuring everything off. And one th thing of note here I have to mention is that... Uh, Make sure you really, really, really mix this well, um, at least for a couple minutes, more than you think you need. Uh, I like to pour it out onto a paper plate, as you see here, and that actually extends the, the amount of time it's gonna remain viscous, is what it is right now. And what we do is we just wet up our roller, and we're gonna go across the leading edge, and we're going to wet out all the carbon tow that we applied in a previous video, which I'll leave a link to above. And we're just going to nicely wet and saturate all that leading edge 12K toe. Just work our way around the perimeter. Be careful of the tip here. It's, it's very delicate. So just take your time and uh, just let the roller do the work for you, okay? Uh, next, we're gonna move on to the hinge line here. Same process. Just make sure everything's pretty wet and uh, saturated. Um, if you don't get everything, uh, you can always blotch on some more before we sandwich this thing in between the mylars, okay? So get as much as you can right now. Now I'm going to wet out my uh, 12K pre-preg uh, spars that I have. If you guys are using the other method, as we mentioned in the previous video, you'd be doing this on the... Uh, on the wing itself at this moment, right on the core. And now it's time to move on to the mylars themselves. And we have to get some fabric down on this. So there's a couple ways of doing this. Some people like to wet out the mylar first and then put drop the fabric on top. I prefer putting the fabric down dry like this and then putting the uh, resin over top and saturating this i find it just to be a lot easier um, handling wise for the uh, fiberglass this is all uh one point point seven five uh fiberglass here cut on a bias and i'm just putting little dabs of resin on here to help hold it in place so it doesn't move around as much when i use the roller so you want to try to roll this on from the, uh, the middle of the mylars out toward the edges to prevent any wrinkles from forming. Uh, if you do have a wrinkle, um, work it out and wet it out. Uh, if you leave the wrinkle in, it will show up on the final product. So try to avoid wrinkles first off. And if you do have one, just work it out with a roller. Uh, as you can tell, this is mylar is saturated i mean it is just coated with epoxy and that's what you want at this point we're going to get rid of the excess later but at this point we need that we need that to uh, make sure everything is totally saturated and that roller is just totally full of it too i mean <laughs> it's got f at least 15 grams of resin in inside the roller now i'm going to put down the uh the doubler for the flaperons uh, I was debating on whether I should use this or not, but I kind of convinced myself that I should. 
So it's just a doubler that fits up to the hinge line and over top of the flap runs. And I did this for both sides, okay? Everything I'm doing here is going for both sides. So I'm just working, uh, working that doubler, just saturating that as well. There's enough resin left in the roller to do the job. So I don't have to worry about that too much. And we're just working on a little wrinkle there. So it's all good. I'm trying to get rid of that little mark there, but I found out it's on the other side of the mylar. No worries. Okay, now it's time to trim off the excess. Um, that's why, you know, just leave a lot excess. Uh, it's easier to work with. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, and this cut here, you don't have to be like laser precise or nothing. Just as long as it's close to the front of the mylar, you're fine. If anything's hanging over, uh, don't worry about it. It's not going to affect anything at all. So just trim it off. And it, this process I'm using, I, I just find it's a lot easier. So now we're going to debulk and we're going to use some just cheapo toilet paper and just roll it out on top of the mylars. And uh, we're going to use that to soak up all the excess resin that we have. I'm using a, a hard uh, rubber roller. I think it's used for in the printing industry, but I got it from Amazon, but you want to roll out um, everything like evenly and with the same pressure. And this is going to get pick up like quite a bit of resin, not all of it, but it will get quite a bit. It's going to leave, uh, leave enough there to have the fiberglass saturated still. Now you want to just peel it off and make sure you don't wait around to peel it off. You should peel it off pretty quick or it'll stick actually to the fiberglass and they'll all come up at once, which you don't want. Okay, that's not a good day. So do it pretty fast. Okay, so now I'm putting down the, uh, the peg reinforcement patch. It's uh, made out of 90 gram uh, carbon fiber fabric and it's got some fiberglass backing on the back of it so it doesn't uh, fray all over the place. I'm just wetting it out with a little sponge and I want to place it so it overlaps the spar and it's going to sit over top of the, of the leading edge uh, 12k toe. So all three are joined as one and you're going to have a really really strong joint right there and that's what you want for the throwing peg right so we're just gonna wet it out a little more on the back side of it that's where the fiberglass uh, is so we'll just do that and now we're just gonna put on our spars so uh, they've been sitting there soaking for a while just line up the root first and um, just let the other end over the tip just let it run wild because we have to trim that off anyways so you just want it lined up at the root essentially and lined up with the lines that you have on the, line, on the mylar. And we're just gonna trim that off. Trim the spar, not the mylars. Now that's all good. Now we're gonna put everything together into a sandwich. Uh, this process here, hopefully you can get this in one shot. If you do, go out and buy yourself a lottery ticket because you are really lucky. Um, this is really tedious to get everything lined up as everything wants to stick to each other, right? So it kind of, it makes it difficult, but once you finally got it, um, you just put some tape on it. And uh, then like the tips are even, they're easier than the root, so. Once you get that taped together, uh, so nothing's gonna move, we're good. We're on to the next step, which is going to be to put this into this breather bag. Um, the inside of it's made out of polyester, uh, just a poly that I picked up at Home Depot. And the outside's just uh, constructed with paper towel, just taped on the outside of the poly. So you put in your wing, and uh, since it's poly, nothing's going to stick. Now the paper towel is there to provide ventilation, uh, equal ventilation across the entire length of the wing, so you have equal vacuum across the entire length of the wing. 
and we're just going to slip that right inside of the vacuum bag everything goes in and right now i'm just going to try to center it up leave about an inch at the end so you have equal vacuum even at the end and now we're at the uh the valve part or the vacuum fitting part and now we're off to seal up this bag uh, there's a couple ways of doing this uh, this method I'm using here I'm just using some uh, acrylic latex uh, caulking and I find that this method here is about 99% foolproof I mean uh, when this thing seals there's no way air is gonna get in there so you just put down a bead of uh, caulking down here and that should be good enough but for insurance reasons I use a piece of tuck tape and I want to put that on there too if I can get unstuck from my finger and uh, just put that right on top there so I'm gonna fold this over the end of the bag and squish that caulking in between it and between those two and then fold up the ends between that and once the vacuum is applied there is no way that that thing's gonna leak the only leakage I get is from that vacuum fitting most of the time and I usually take care of that with some uh, some uh, modeler's clay but right now I've just applied some vacuum and I'm trying to make sure that I have no major wrinkles in this uh, vacuum bag all right so you might have a couple like small wrinkles but that's no big deal um, you just want to avoid anything major. If you do have a major wrinkle in it, don't worry. Just take the vacuum hose off and let's redo it. Uh, okay, now I'm, I've am i placed the wing in the vacuum bag on top of the bottom bed of the uh, from the uh, wing forms. And we're going to let it rest on top of that. And we are also going to put the top bed on top, which we are going to weigh down. This way, everything is going to dry and cure to be nice and straight. And we should have absolutely zero issues as far as warpage goes. The next thing I want to discuss is this box I made uh, to control the temperature. Uh, it's just made out of inch and a half styrofoam, cheap stuff. And I've got a couple incandescent lights in there, which are going to be used as a heat source. And it'll be controlled by this thermostat here, which I picked up from uh, Amazon, I think, for seedling germination. And the next thing I want to discuss is the vacuum itself. I've made this out of a fridge compressor from a mini fridge. And I picked up for about 20 bucks and it's got a dial indicator on it. And the most important part is connected with those that green and black wire. That's a vacuum switch that turns on at 20 inches of mercury and turns off at 23 very important that's the heart of the whole system and now all we have to do is put that hot box on top of our layup and i'm just going to connect the thermostat which i've i'll set it to 27 degrees celsius and i'll let that sit for 24 hours in this hot box before i touch it and i'd like to wish everybody happy holidays on this 2022 christmas eve don't forget to like, sub, comment. Peace.